Advanced Financial Modeling, Topic 5, Fixed Income Portfolio Management, Earning Objective Number 5, we're going to compute, compute effective duration in bond portfolio analytics. So the first thing I want to talk about is what if uh, your company had a defined benefit pension, meaning that you have certain payouts to employees over, say, the next 30 years that you've estimated. And say you've estimated that, uh, you know, from 1 to year 30, you estimate that you need to pay out these amounts. And in order for the pension to be considered solvent, you want to hold a bond uh, or a portfolio of bonds that has, this, has the same value as this pension liability. So what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the net present value of all those cash flows using Excel's NPV function. Then the choice is, well, which bonds do I hold? Well, what you would like to do is have the bonds in which you're holding to have the same duration as the pension liability. So as rates change, they have the same changes in value. So uh, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's not straightforward how you calculate the duration of a random set of cash flows. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to calculate something called effective duration. So we said that modified duration of a bond is one interpretation is the average percent change in value for a plus or minus 100 basis point changes in the change in rates. So what we're going to do to calculate effective duration is we're not going to use a formula like a first derivative that we did with a bond. Uh, what we need to do is do kind of more of a computational method. We'll just see on what happens to the value of the bond if the discount rate goes up or down 100 basis points and calculate the average percent change uh, in absolute value terms. And that's what we'll call the duration of this random set of cash flows. And we'll call that the effective duration. So let's go to our spreadsheet. These are the cash flows. Let's calculate, and we say that this count rate is 4.5%. Let's go ahead and calculate the NPV of the cash flows. I'm going to put in the discount rate, comma. I'll put in all of the cash flows, control shift down. And we say that those cash flows are worth 68000 uh, 184. That's the net present value. I'm going to highlight this cell, anchor it with F4, and copy down. So I just copied the formula exactly. And what I'm going to do is calculate the value of these cash flows if the discount rate was plus 0.01 and minus 0.01. So what's the value if it rates are up 100 and down 100? So if it's up 100, you're down about 5,000. And if you're up 100, well, it looks like about four or 5,000. Then I'll calculate the average percent change. I'll just say equals. We can take the new minus the old value divided by one. Whoops new value divided by the original value minus one. So it's down 6.19%. And do the same thing, new value divided by old value minus one, up 7%. But I wanna do the absolute percent change. So I'm gonna change that formula to absolute value of that function. And the same with this one absolute value. So if rates are plus or minus 100 basis points, it's six and 7% change in absolute value. I'll just take the average of those two numbers. So on average, this bond changes 6.59%. However, duration is never quoted as a percentage. It's always quoted as uh, just a number. Uh, so I'll just take that times 100. And what we say is these cash flows have a duration of 6.59, we might say, years. Okay, so that's how we calculate effective duration. Again, now why can't we use a function? Well, the function is a, uh, for the bonds was a first derivative of the cash flows. The cash flows were just a formula based on coupon rate and par. So it's easy to calculate a, a, first, a first derivative of that form, you know, bond value, valuation formula. However, with random cash flows, we can't do that. So we have to do this numerical process where we just shock rates up and down 100 basis points and get the average percent change. So there we go. That is our effective duration of these random 30 cash flows.
So now what we'd like to do is think about if this, uh, well, before I actually move to hedging this, uh, I want to talk about effective duration in mortgages for a minute. Mortgages are one of the biggest asset classes in the world. So uh, what's weird about mortgages are their durations and convexities. So let's say there's a 30 year mortgage and it's a hundred thousand dollar mortgage and we'll just for simplicity, it's just interest only, don't worry about principal payments. So it pays 5% interest a year. So you, uh, you bought this mortgage from a Wall Street firm that bought it from a bank that issued it to somebody that bought a house and it's gonna pay, is expected to pay interest of $5,000, 5% of 100,000 for the next five years. And then the homeowner is expected to prepay their model or their mortgage after five years. Now, this is a 30 year mortgage. However, people on average might hold their mortgage for, for about five years. They move, they get a cash out refinance, they take money out of the house, they die, whatever. Uh, Say so on average, this mortgage is expected to last for five years. How can I calculate the duration and convexity of this mortgage? Well, the first thing I'll do is calculate a, a, a net present value of it and say we have a discount rate is 5%. You can see in the spreadsheet that I'll take the pre net present value of these cash flows at 5% and say the, this mortgage is worth $100,000, just the present value of cash flows. And now I want to calculate the effective duration of this mortgage. Now, all mortgages issued in the States, uh, I think almost all, uh, have this prepayment option, meaning the owner can prepay their op their mortgage at any time, paying just uh, paying, paying back the par or principal amount with no penalty. So what we need to do is estimate if rates are plus or minus 100 basis points, one percentage point, uh, what would the homeowner do? And I'll just make a very simple, we'll call it a prepayment model, yeah, a very simplistic prepayment model. If rates fall 100 basis points, the homeowner is going to just prepay, pay off their mortgage in one year. So instead of waiting five years for the money, you get 105 next year. The present value of 105 at, at lower interest rate of 4% is 100,962, and that's up 1%. However, what if interest rates go up 100 basis points? So rates go from five to six. Well, the homeowner on average might, might decide to hold on to the mortgage a little bit longer. They may not move, they might not get their cash out refinance, just a little bit longer, they're gonna hold on to the mortgage. And so the, the mortgage might last seven years and not five. I'll take the present value of these cash flows, discount at that higher rate 6%, and I get $94,000. And that mean, and the average percent change was 5.58%, it's actually a decline. And then I'll take the, at the uh, average of those two percentages, absolute percentages, and I get 3.27 years as the effective duration. And that's about what you might see as a duration of a mortgage, two, three, or four years. Even though they're 30-year mortgages, people prepay their mortgages when rates go down and they hold on to them a little bit longer if rates go up. Uh, but on average, they might hold on to them for three or four years. So this duration, this, this mortgage has an uh, effective duration of 3.27 years. Now, I did uh, also just, just for FYI, for your information, I did calculate the convexity of this mortgage also uh, using uh, Excel, an Excel function with the up and down, I'm sorry, using just a formula, using the up and down rates. You can look it up on the web at some point, but this, this one has a convexity of negative 231. And if I were to graph the prices, 100.9 100, 100 and 94,000, this is the price yield relationship looking at this simplistic mortgage. And what you see is the slope is about 3.27 years. You can think about that, the slope as the duration. However, unlike all other bonds we'd ever see or we've seen before, all other non, non uh, or other bonds that don't have this prepayment option, we say have convexity, meaning it goes away from the origin. Mortgages have concavity, meaning they bow inward, and it comes from this uh, prepayment option. Uh, by the way, this is a concave function, which you might uh, you know, have seen in high school. Uh, in finance, we don't say concave for some reason, we just say negative convexity. So we say mortgages have negative convexity, meaning if you graph the price yield relationship, uh, it is uh, it bows inward towards the origin, and if you compute the actual convexity number, it's a negative number, 
which also means it's concave or has negative convexity. And again, it all comes from the fact that the mortgage can prepay. prepay. One insight on how you have negative convexity is if you think of the duration as the slope at the current price and yield, if rates fall, the slope gets smaller. So this mortgage may have a three year duration. However, if rates fall, people are gonna prepay in one year. So you say the life of the mortgage is about one. So what the, another interpretation of negative convexity is that the, the slope or durations fall as rates fall and the durations rise or slopes rise as rates rise and people hold on onto their mortgages more. Now we're going to do one more thing. We're going to look at portfolio duration and convexity, not just a single bond or a single mortgage. What about a whole portfolio? Well, a portfolio of, of fixed income securities, you know, mortgages, uh, you know, just T-bills, uh, corporate, corporate bonds, and so on. The durations and convexities of those portfolios you can think of as just the simple weighted average of the individual securities. And it's weighted by the, port, by the assets or the securities market value. One method of hedging a portfolio is to match it with a portfolio that has the same duration. We call it duration matching. So let's do, before we do that in the next topic, I want to just calculate that if we say owned these, um, these assets right here, uh, some one year, five year, 10 year, and 30 year bonds, just one of each. I can then calculate the durations and convexities just simply using Excel's functions or the bond, uh, bond val and bond, you know, the, the, the duration functions I gave you. And then we can calculate the portfolio's value and the portfolio's duration and convexity is just gonna be the market value weighted uh, of, e of each uh, security. So let's go ahead and just do that in the spreadsheet. There's the mortgaging example. And it's already done for you. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this. In this example, I bought 45 Well, let's go ahead and change this to one. Uh, well, just look at 45, I guess. For, say, say you own 45 of the five-year bonds, 60 of the 10-year bonds, 85 of the 30-year uh, bonds. Your durations and convexities are given here. We'll consider these uh, probably mortgages since the convexities are negative. And what we can do here is then calculate the total value of the assets. Notice I have uh, prices are given here. So if I just take the price times the quantity, I have the total value of the five-year notes, total value of the 10-year notes, and total value of the 30-year notes. You can actually, if these were just simple bonds, I would use the duration function, function and convexity function, but we'll just use this example. The duration were in this case are given to you, durations and convexities. Again, if these were just simple, uh, say treasury bonds or corporate bonds, I would just use the uh, bond vows, or I'm sorry, the Excel's built-in uh, built functions or the uh, functions I gave you for duration and convexity. And also I'm calculating the income of these portfolios. So notice I have the par amount times the annual coupon rate times the number of bonds, and that tells me exactly how much income, coupon income, these bonds would generate. Now, what I want to show you is, are these two calculations. How would I get the duration of this portfolio? Well, notice this po total portfolio is worth $10 million. The durations of the five, tens, and 30-year instruments are three, one, and three and a half. However, I'm gonna use a sum product, a weighted average. I'm just gonna take a sum product of the durations of the individual securities times their total market values. So on average, these have a 3.31 duration. And I'll do the same thing with convexity, just take use the sum product to get the 
duration and convexity of the total portfolio. And that's negative 172. So that's how I'll calculate the duration and convexity and total value and income of a portfolio of instruments. Okay. So again, the big insight there is duration and convexity uh, of a portfolio is simply the market value weighted average of the individual securities. In this example, the durations and convexities were given to you, but in another examples I might give, or I'll give you later, uh, and for the assignment is you would actually use the, uh, the mod dir uh, function and the convexity function to compute these for just normal assets. All right, so uh, that's it. That's how we calculate the portfolio analytics for an individual or for, for a portfolio. In the next topic, we'll talk about hedging portfolio duration and convexity.